This is Twit. Okay, so Mr. Howell, you are clearly a lot more bullish on this story than I am, um, but I do find it interesting. And we're talking about Google and their Starline project. Uh, they, they introduced this back at 2021 uh, at Google I.O. And as mentioned here on The Verge, uh, this, this project seems to be the real deal. Well, what exactly is it? It is essentially another way of doing a um, teleconference or a one-on-one -on -one virtual chat, but it's going to be way more immersive and way more of a real life experience. Basically, because of all of the extra bells and whistles and technologies in place that allows you to look at the person you're speaking to and feel like they're literally in the room with you. This isn't just holding up your phone and having FaceTime. This isn't just having a big screen for a Zoom meeting. This is a really, really big piece of equipment with a gazillion sensors all over it and lenses to help give you a, a much more immersive and real world uh, experience with this. Looks good. Sounds good. I'm not saying I have a lot of confidence in all of this, Mr. Howell, uh, because. All right. So let's 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 look at some scenarios of where this can be used. Think about mm. enterprise um, offices, big offices, uh, such as the offices that they're planning to roll this out to like Salesforce, WeWork, big companies. They want to, they're wanting to have a, a meeting with someone on the other side of the country. Fine and dandy. Instead of pulling up Zoom, they can pull this up. Does this really make that experience any better? Because it looks like you can talk directly to the CEO um, over a better bit of resolution. Is this really going to make that deal go through in their negotiations? I don't see it. I see this as a big money suck because you're going to have to buy a lot of extra equipment. You're going to have to have a dedicated space for this to work in. You can't just flop down into a conference room and, and, and set this up. Uh, this is literally a big old booth and room that's dedicated to this type of technology. I'm not thrilled with that. Oh, and by the way, this is Google, who has a huge graveyard of things that they uh, have their ADD moments on and just kill it because, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we forgot about that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> also known as Google Stadia. <laughs> oh, I mean, and, and 500,000 other products. Yeah, Stadia is just the latest one. You know, yeah. I saw the story and it, and, and it, it was captivating because, again, the, the pandemic really made us shift as, as, as a people. You know, we we saw the the explosion of Zoom and and other teleconferencing technology, and it has definitely gotten better. It has made things easier for a lot of us, uh, including content creators like ourselves, where we can do these things remote and still have a, a great quality experience for for us as hosts, as well as our listeners and viewers. I don't see something like this being necessary and that useful. Just a bit of cool tech that says, hey, this tech is going to get better. But I, I don't know. Your thoughts? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so am I bullish on this idea? I'm, I'm excited about the I, I'm excited about the idea. Am I excited about it as a Google product? No, because you know, <laughs> based on what you've said, what you've pointed out, right? And this is just the this is the unfortunate place where I think a lot of people um, who follow this stuff regularly are with Google is that Google has really great ideas. They have zero like ability to stay with those ideas, or rather, launch an idea that they're willing to commit to very long term. Everything feels like it's walking a tightrope and it could fall off at any moment. And so I see something like this, and I love the idea of. It. Like I, right now, you know, just to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit, I'm mm -hmm. sitting in my friend's office and he has what I'm guessing to be a 55 inch TV mounted to the wall behind here. He uses it for programming, very high resolution. You know, yeah. I've got my Zoom uh, return video feed is like a, a, a window this big above my webcam, which is sitting in front of this gigantic monitor. Would I rather be looking at you in this monitor and have, and the way Project Starline works, you know, it really is like this three dimensional light field type experience where I'm looking at you directly in your eyes and you're looking at me directly in my eyes and it's, and it's big enough to be real. It's big enough that I'm looking at a real size version of Ant on the other side. I would love that. That would be so amazing. And I do actually, you know, you, you um, spelled out the example of like, you know, meeting with a CEO to get that job done or get that deal made. And I guess the question that I have there is, 
Would you say that it's easier for you to get that deal made if you're in person versus on a Zoom window? And I would say yes. You're probably mm-hmm. going to have better chances getting that mm-hmm. deal made in person than you are on Zoom. So then, if there's a technology that makes not in person still look like in person, and from what I understand about this technology is that it's so convincing that you really do feel like you're sitting at a table with someone, mm-hmm. then I think the chances are more. Like, no, it's not going to be the only reason that that deal gets made, but probably better than you know a, a Zoom window and, and might be mm-hmm. a whole lot less expensive barring the expense of the technology, I realize, but then flying out, you know, to, to do these things as well. Mm-hmm. So I like the idea of it, but it is Google we're talking about. Google has pointed out that this is not a, this is not a product that they're selling. They are really in the R and D right. phase on this. They're, they're rolling it out, you know, and, and inviting some partners in to test it. I think we work is a really great, um, a great deal, like something along those lines, because then if people, you know, if I'm a if I'm looking for office space, like WeWork might be a great satellite place to go when I want to have these kind of conversations. Oh, just go to your WeWork. I'll go there too, and we'll be in the same room instead of on other sides of the of the planet. I think that's pretty cool. Well, do you not think we're getting pretty close to this nowadays with the tech that we have in place? Because I'm speaking to you through a cinema camera right now, and yeah. with ideal connectivity. I'm sure it looks pretty daggum good because my return feed of it, I, I could just touch myself right now. It, it, it's it's pretty. Mm-hmm. And you put that onto a large screen uh, for your Zoom box, whether it be a, a, a laptop or what have you, just connect that up to a large screen. You're still going to get a very nice display of the person you're speaking to. Um, I don't think you need to set up a huge box. Uh, if someone, if everybody mm-hmm. has legit equipment like a nice camera with that that's able to shoot at a with a nice soft depth of field heck even the stuff that mr laporte's been using this week with um the twit news those cameras look great and those were little tiny one inch sensors and it he looked really really good and he didn't have to spend a gazillion dollars and have all of these extra sensors and things like that he didn't have to worry about doing chroma keying because that's another thing that this technology is going to do because you're not going to have People with bald heads like me, it's easy to chroma key around me, but people that have a lot of hair, you get to see all of the mm. little artifacts and stuff like that. You know, it, yep. I don't know. It, uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I don't mean to poo poo all over it. You don't need to be sorry. <laughs> no, I, th- I think it's, I think it's uh, totally valid, right? Like what we have right now and what we've, we've learned a new skill, I think in the last couple of years, the pandemic mm-hmm. forced us all to get comfortable with video chat. And, mm-hmm. and I think before the pandemic, I'd say the majority of people who video chat now were not comfortable with it. There were a lot of people that yeah. did it and they were ahead of the curve. But now everybody has been exposed to it. They might not like it, but mm-hmm. they're a lot more used to it, and a lot more comfortable with it. So so it's kind of like our experience. It, it fills in the gaps. It fills in the gaps of, of my video chat with you. You know, I, I'm able to kind of block out the fact that connectivity is not always perfect and sometimes there's blips. I'm able to you know, tune out the mm-hmm. fact that when I'm talking to you, um, actually, you're really good at looking at the camera, but when you're looking at the camera, you're not looking at me, so it's not true eye contact. You know what I mean? And so you talk to some yeah, people and yeah. the whole time you're talking to them, they're looking off the side like this. And so we <laughs> fill in the gaps for that. Yeah. We, make, you know, we, we make corrections in our mind um, for that. It's better than we had before. I'm just saying this really is kind of the next level of that, right? It gives yeah. you a three-dimensional, life-size kind of re, uh, recreation. By the way, it's not, a, it's not really a camera. It's recreating you. Recreating it's a computer it, yeah. that, that recreates in 3D your image, your likeness, um, to make it seem like you know you're there. And yeah, I don't know how necessary it is, but I know it's cool. I know, like, I know I would love to check it out. And I wonder if this is just the beginning point for really great technology where the price is a lot lower and it does something similar to this ten years from now. And if that's the case, I'm all for it. And, and and again, I can appreciate what they're saying as far as making it look better. Um, mm-hmm. I've had a couple pitches here recently locally with, with some people for, for business. And it definitely makes a difference that they're looking at me with nice light yeah. and a nice camera and stuff like that because they always comment on it. And it will take me way more seriously than just me staring at it through the, one of these weird um, webcam things. You know, so yeah. I, I get where yeah. Google is coming from. 
on that. But at the same time, I'm just trying to think a little bit more practical about it, thinking about the the, the enterprise offices, thinking about the WeWorks, thinking about um, Salesforce or what have you. And it, is it going to make any sense practically there or could they just beef up their existing 50 inch TV like what you have there in your friend's office and stuff like that. Or yeah. put in some additional speakers, you know, because that goes a long way. Like we just talked about Naraver, one of our sponsors, having stuff like that makes a big mm-hmm. difference, you know? It does. It does. Yeah. I will be really curious to see if Google sticks to this technology. And, if. you know, like we, like we said, <laughs> you know, it's you cross your fingers and. <laughs> You still have no assurances anymore as far as what Google's going to do that with. But if they do, and there's no question this is in- incredibly expensive technology right now. Like, I'm really curious to see, like, as they develop it out further, like, who who is? Who is the, uh, the customer for a, a product like this? And, I mean, it really feels like the enterprise is probably the right place for something like this. I don't, I don't think this technology gets a whole lot cheaper anytime soon. So, but, but, you know, trialing this thing in places like Salesforce, in WeWork, Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good way for, for workers, for the people on the other side to see like, what kind of work are we able to get done when we have the ability to do this? Because we haven't had the ability to do this, not to this level. I, I do think that there is something to be said for interpersonal connection where we can look into each other's eyes. And that's what this really enables. It enables it, it, it's so real from what I understand that it tricks your mind into thinking that it's like real, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and there's value there. I know when I talk with someone mm-hmm. in real in real life, like there's an emotional connection that you can get yep. by looking in someone's eyes. And that's what I wonder about this. Does that create a next layer, a next level of of communication satisfaction, let's say, uh, yeah. if we have to be virtual, that we don't get from current systems. I would guess that it probably does. I just don't know if the costs justify justify yep. it. That's the thing. That's the thing. Is it justifiable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll see. But the technology is super cool. And I hope that someday I get to check this out. If it means that I have to go to a WeWork and, uh, you know, call somebody else at a WeWork, I'm totally down. <laughs> I'm down for the, uh, for the uh, field trip. I will do it. <laughs> so. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.